Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Woodford, and I am the college counselor with Hilliard City Schools. I know as parents of juniors, we have a hard time just grasping that our, our junior students are only three and a half months away from filling out all of their college applications, but that's where we are. And so um, if at any time you have questions, if you're trying to ask questions, please feel free to email me and we can schedule a time to meet and walk you through these steps. Uh, but we're gonna go over a lot of that now. Uh, feel free to take notes and I would love to meet with you when you are free. So let's talk about why we are here. The reason why that I'm sending this out, and I think it's important that um, not only the students, but the parents understand what is the process uh, when it starts um, and, and how important deadlines are. It's important that we understand terms. Uh, we're going to figure out, should we send ACT and SAT scores or should we not send, okay? Uh, we're gonna take a look at what the application looks like and then we're gonna help create a plan. And then we're also hopefully going to take down some of the stress. I was working with a, a, a junior last week, poor Ellie. The only thing that she could say was, it is terrifying. And so I know a lot of folks feel that way and, and hopefully this will help make things better. So it's important that our seniors understand that senior year does count. As the lady down at the University of South Carolina said to me, Tom, please tell your folks that senior year is not a recreational activity. It does count. So senior schedules count, the mid-year grades count, um, keeping the schedule that you sign up for, for the whole year is very important. Um, final grades are very important. And nothing is finalized until the colleges receive final grades. Even though students are gonna be accepted in January um, as well as February, but um, final grades, um, colleges do have the option to rescind all of those acceptances based on final grades. So it is important to understand senior year does matter. ACT and SAT. Um, all of our students are gonna be taking the SAT uh, this Wednesday, um, and that is outstanding. It's important that we create a plan. And as we look forward with the ACT, there's a June test as well as a July test. There will also be an ACT in early September. As we create our plan and we look at when various colleges have their deadlines, a lot of schools have a November 1st date when everything has to be in. There's even some schools like the University of South Carolina um, and many others that have an October 15th date. So knowing that the last ACT that is guaranteed to meet all of the early deadlines would be the September date. So as students are planning to take the ACT this spring and over the summer, please know that the September date is the last date that's guaranteed to get to all of the deadlines. When we talk about the SAT, uh, all of our kids are gonna take it on Wednesday. Um, there's also a date in May and a date in June. And then there's always a date in late August. Again, that is the um, August testing date is the last date that will guarantee all of the scores to get to all of the colleges by the um, early application deadlines. Notice there's an SAT in both, um, in the, there's an ACT and an SAT in the month of October. There's no guarantee that those scores will get to all of the colleges by those deadlines. If we have any athletes, student athletes, who are planning to play a college sport, if you're planning to play a D1 or D2 NCAA sport, you must send your scores 
to the NCAA. And that code is 9999. If your child plans to play at an NAIA school like Mount Vernon Nazarene, that is an NAIA school, they have their own clearinghouse as well. And the scores must be sent to them. And that code is 9876. So test optional. Prior to COVID, test optional was a big movement. There were over a thousand schools um, prior to COVID that were already test optional. Schools like the University of Chicago, a top 10 school, they've been test optional for um, four years now. Uh, Wake Forest, um, they have been test optional for 16 years. So what does that mean? Test optional means that students have the choice to send their scores or to not send their scores, okay? Some students might choose to send their ACT and SAT scores to some of the colleges that they're going to apply to, but they may choose to, to go test optional to others. You would always look at the middle 50% for that college to see if sending your scores is a good idea. I'm gonna reference Ohio State a lot um, throughout this program, just because we have a lot of kids that are, are planning to um, uh, fill out their application. So it's important that we understand Ohio State this, this past year, this school year had over 71,000 applications. And so with that, um, a good number of students this year, more than half, 54% of the students applied with test scores. Last year, of the kids who are freshmen there now, last year they had 64,000 students who, who had applied and 47% of those students applied with scores. However, if you look at this year's freshmen at OSU, even though more kids applied test optional, more kids got admitted with scores. So it's important that you understand if a school might be test optional, but they still might value scores. So my suggestion is if you score in the middle 50% for that school or higher, then you should apply with scores. Now, a lot of colleges have moved to a self-reporting transcript as well as ACT and SAT. Uh, this will show up on the common application uh, where students will have to um, put in all of the courses they've ever taken in high school and all of their grades. Sometimes this is done inside of the common app. Sometimes other schools use a third party and um, they will get an email after they submit their application and they will have to create a student account and then um, uh, report all of their grades as well as all of their courses in all of those grades. And many times they will ask students to self-report ACT and SAT as well. That is up to a student. If you're applying test optional, of course you will not self-report scores, but only if you plan to send scores to those colleges do you self-report them. Please understand, if you're going to apply with scores, and even if you self-report them, they it still is not final until they get the scores from ACT or the College Board. It is important that even though you self-report, you still must send those scores from the testing agency. Important terms, early decision. This is something that Ohio State does not have, okay? This is a binding application, basically is what a student is saying, that this college is their first choice school, and if they get into this school, they are going to go. And by rule, if you get into the school, you apply to ED, then you have to cancel all of your other applications. 
Only 18% of the colleges out there offer an early decision option. Early action, which is something Ohio State does have, is an earlier deadline. It's also tied to their scholarship deadline, but it's an early application. Students can apply to as many schools as they want to early action. Unlike ED, students can only apply to one school early decision. So early action, students can apply to as many schools as they want to. They'll find out earlier um, and that whole process will just move along just a little bit quicker. Scholarship deadlines. A school like Ohio State, they have paired their scholarship deadline to their early action deadline, which is November 1st. So students who want to have an opportunity to earn any merit scholarships from OSU must apply early action and they must apply before the 1st of November. Regular admissions. So many colleges will have a later deadline as the final deadline where they can take all of their applications. Ohio State has a February 1st regular application deadline. So students can apply after the 1st of November. They can apply and still get in, but they cannot get any merit scholarships. Super scoring. This is a question I, I tell our students all the time that they should be asking when they go on visits. Do you super score the ACT or the SAT? Some of you might not know what that is. So super scoring is where you take the ACT multiple times. And let's say you score a 27, 27, 26. Ohio State, they do not super score. So they're gonna say your child has a 27 on the ACT. But a school like Miami, Johns Hopkins, Case Western, they super score. So they will take your highest math score from one test, your highest English score from a different test, science and reading. And then they will create a new composite score for your child, which might be a 28 or even a 29. So that is super scoring. The common application, this is one application that over 900 colleges use. We're gonna dive into this much more. Most of your students will be um, filling out this application. The member page is the college specific portion of the application. And I will show you that as well. More terms. So when students get in, they're gonna get an, an email where they will get um, an update in their student account that's gonna say, Admitted, congratulations, that is, that is awesome. Students do not have to commit to a college until May 1st of their senior year. Another term that's used is deferred. This happens a lot. A lot of colleges go through the first readings and they defer students for a later date. What that means is, so it, it does not mean yes, does not mean no, means they will reread the application after they go through all of the regular applications later on through this cycle. And then they will let students know. Like Ohio State, they let students know the last, um, the last full week of March is when they let students know who were on the deferred list. And then there's waitlisted. If your student ends up being waitlisted, to this school, that means they will uh, get an email and they have to tell that college if they want to stay on the wait list or not. Some students say, heck with it. I didn't get in right away. I'm gonna go ahead and go somewhere else. Other kids are gonna say, well, I'm gonna go ahead and commit somewhere else, but I wanna stay on your wait list. Then usually kids find out if, they're, if they get off the wait list in late May, or June, okay? And so um, the unfortunate piece of that is they've probably put down a deposit at some other school then if, and then if um, school A comes back and says, we, we have chosen you to fill a spot 
on the wait list, the student has to make a choice now. Do I go ahead and make a deposit to this new school? And if they do that, they lose what they've already sent to the um, first college. So um, wait listing can be uh, troublesome at times, um, and, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And then unfortunately, you know, our students will hear that they've been denied. And that's going to happen. Very good students get denied from very good schools. As I said, I just mentioned Ohio State had over 71,000 applicants for next year's freshman class. There were kids that got in with a 3.6. There were kids who did not get in with a 4.4. That happens. And so it wasn't anything that the student did. Uh, the university has to turn students away who would be very successful at their school. But I just received some data. Um, Ohio State admitted um, students, a lot of students from Central Ohio, students from every county in the state of Ohio, from every state in the US. And they didn't tell us um, the number, but they typically will admit kids from over 25 countries from all over the world. So when you look at a class of 7,600, um, you know, it gets to be very, very tough. And they have to tell kids who qualify, who meet all of their standards, no. And so um, that is gonna happen. Don't be upset by that. You just move on to the schools that have said yes. College visits, your kids should be doing this now and throughout the summer. You schedule this by going on a school's website, choosing a date and a time, and going on a tour. What students should have done by August 1st, they should have a list of colleges that they want to apply to, and they should have already visited all of those schools. So let's speak briefly here about financial aid. So parents, you will fill out the, the free application for federal student aid on the 1st of October during your child's senior year, okay? We will have a financial aid meeting at the end of September to get you ready for that date. They use prior prior, so you will be using information from your 2021 tax returns. A lot of private colleges and a lot of schools in the South have a second form <clears throat> that they use to figure out financial aid. It's called a CSS profile. So if you see this, do not skip it. It is something that you as a parent are going to need to fill out. It will dive much deeper into the family assets. The FAFSA, you will be able to do in less than an hour. The CSS profile, enjoy your weekend. It is, it is uh, a much more cumbersome process. Again, <clears throat> I will have a financial aid meeting at the end of September for everyone. College websites for scholarships, fastweb.com is a very common one for national scholarships. That'll go live for uh, next year's seniors this summer. The um, Columbus Foundation will have scholarships beginning this summer for kids who live in Franklin County only. And then we will have in Hilliard um, local scholarships just for kids that go to Hilliard City Schools. Financial aid terms, when you get to the point where it's time to fill out the FAFSA, please go to fafsa.gov. Do not go to any other website. The federal government will run some type of calculation and will come back and give you your EFC, the Estimated Family Contribution, that AKA is what the federal government says you can afford for college. You're not going to agree with it, but that's where uh, all of the um, financial aid packages, that's what it's gonna be based off of. 
It's important too when, when your students get their financial aid package and they see subsidized loan and the unsubsidized loan, that's a federal loan that is in their name. And it's important that they know the difference of those. And it's also important that they understand that they know that is their loan. This is a federal loan, just like this Parent PLUS loan. That is a federal loan as well that is in the parent's name. So there's three different types of loans here that are through the federal government. Two of them are in the student's name and the PLUS loan is in the parent name. So there's four different types of applications out there. One is called the Common App. Over 900 colleges use this one application. Uh, there are university specific applications. And so that is when a college has their own application. It'll be found on their school's website. The third type of application is the universal app. Only uh, 50 colleges all over the country use this one application. All 50 of those schools also use the common app. I've never seen it. None of our students have ever used it, but I just want you to know that it's out there. And then the coalition app is a new application. Over 300 schools use this one application. Um, <clears throat> all of the schools that use this app also use Common App, except for the University of Maryland. So um, Common App Camps, in August, I'll be sending out a um, um, college news email on August 3rd. August 1st is when the Common App goes live. So I'll send out a college news email on August 3rd. And it'll have a sign up genius for kids to sign up for a Common App camp before school even starts. So I will host seven or eight of these camps before school starts. I'll host a few after school starts and into September. And we will help kids begin to fill out those applications. We'll help them select all of the schools will help them link their common app to their school links account. School links is the new program we are using to take, take the place of Naviance. And then we will help students request letters of recommendation and transcripts inside school links. So look for that email so kids can sign up for that. So when we talk about the common app, let's take a look at it so you know exactly what it looks like. So when students go to commonapp.org, this is what they're going to see. As soon as they click on create a student account, this option is going to come up, um, is going to show up. All students will apply as a first year student. Even if they've taken some College Credit Plus courses, they're still applying as a first year full-time student. They will create an account using an email and a password please put that in their phone. Students should be doing this and not parents. Uh, I struggle when I, when I talk to students about helping them with their application and they can't log in because they don't know their logins because mom and dad did that. This should be something the students are doing and mom and dad are looking over their shoulder. When you get in to the Common App, this is what you will see. The Common App is made up of of five tabs, the first one being the dashboard. As students select their schools by going to the college search, they will put in all of the schools there and they will show up in the dashboard. The purpose of the dashboard is they can look and see everything that, that is needed for that school and when all of the due dates are. When students also go to college search, um, their schools will also show up under my colleges. This is the area where, where each university will have their own questions and students will have to at, um, answer them on top of the common application questions. And this is also where students pay for each application separately. So right here, if we're gonna click on OSU, we can click on OSU, fill out their own questions specific to OSU and pay for the application to be submitted to OSU. 
Common app. So this is the actual application. It's made up of six sections on the side there. And when a student finishes each section, they will get a green check mark. Notice at the bottom here where it says courses and grades, if a college shows up that they need a student to self-report their transcript, this is where they will do that. There will, will be a number there that will tell the student how many of the colleges and the name of that college is gonna show up there too of the college that is asking them to um, self-report their high school transcript. Common App Essay Prompt. So as we look at this, the last section is the writing section. This is where all of the essays are found. I've sent um, these essay prompts out a few times already. Um, students get to choose between one of these prompts. They need to choose one, but they're limited to 650 words. So it's important that they cut out all the fluff and, and they, they write this essay so the reader has, has a better opportunity of creating a vision of who they are. After that college essay, there is an optional COVID essay. And so this is optional. Kids, students can choose to do it or they can say no to it. I'm advising all of our students to take advantage of this opportunity to write about special family circumstances, future plans, things like that. I'll also maybe take advantage of this to maybe touch on a topic that the application has not touched on or even to talk about what students learned about themselves during COVID especially during the lockdown time. So um, students have talked about new skills or new things that they learned about themselves. They learned to play a new musical instrument, something like that, something that they can add, okay? So the application process, very simple. Step one is they have to go to Common App and create a student, student account. Step two is they have to select all of the colleges they plan to apply to inside that application. Step three is to link Common App to their school links account. And step four is to, rec to request transcripts, letters of recommendation inside school links, not inside the um, Common application. And step five, after students apply, most colleges will send an email to the students telling them that they've received their application with a link that they need to create a student account with that school. Ohio State calls it the Buckeye Link account. This is where students, after they create this, all of their information is right there. They can go into their Buckeye Link account and see, they have my transcript, they have my letters of recommendation, they have my application, or they can see they have everything, but they don't have my transcript. And so that's when they can talk to their high school counselor, or they can look inside school links and see, has it been sent yet? But this is where students can see that they have everything in on time. So what can your child expect from your high school counselor. You can expect your high school counselor to fill out the counselor forms to the application, especially to the Common App. Once it's matched to school links, we can send that to those schools along with the transcripts. If a college requires a letter of recommendation from the high school counselor, they will write it. I would encourage your student to go talk to your high school counselor and tell them that this, one of the schools or all the schools that they are going to apply to require a letter, okay? And if they do, then they can fill that out and send it in. Please give the school counselors minimum of two weeks to do this. 
Students want to be requesting these things early. The, your students are in charge of one student. Each of our high school, high school counselors have over 130 seniors. And so um, they will be very busy uploading transcripts, sending them off, writing letters, as well as doing everything else that the start of a new school year needs done. What can you expect from that conference? So they will create, a student will create their own student account. The universities will update that account. Usually it takes uh, 10 to 14 days for them to do that. If something is missing, then the student should reach out to that school. They will also be able to look to see inside school links. Did the high school counselor send everything and it'll have a date of when that was done. If at any time anybody needs to contact the school, it should be the student, unless, unless it's for financial aid. But yeah, and then when colleges make their decisions, students will find them in their student accounts. So on the date that Ohio State's gonna let all of those kids know, students will need to go into their Buckeye Link account and that's where they will see um, what the outcome is. What can students and families expect from me? I am available to meet with you. I'm in the office till June 30th. So if you wanna meet at any time, I would love to do that. I will schedule all kinds of meetings throughout the fall from financial aid, college essay, seminars, application events, and so on. We will host multiple common app camps in August. Your kids should be signing up for them. Okay. And then if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. What should we expect from parents? Parents, I cannot, I cannot say it enough. This is your child's application, not yours. At the end of the application, your child has to sign off that they have filled it out to the best of their knowledge. At no time should parents be filling them out. Parents should be helping the students. They should be editing their work and things like that. But this is a student's application. I struggle every year when I meet with students and they can't even log in to their application because mom and dad created the account. That can't happen, okay? This is the student's, student's application. Again, if there's questions about financial aid, mom and dad, you should be making that phone call, absolutely. We will have a meeting in late September, so you are ready to go to fill out the FAFSA the first, the first of October. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. As students are going on trips and visiting schools, it's important that they go with questions. So they have a good understanding of what services that these schools offer. And also looking at the historical perspective of the school. Like what is the retention rate? You wanna know how many students are coming back for year two after they finish year one. At a place like Ohio State, it's only, it's something like 95%. That is phenomenal. So you know the kids are enjoying being on campus. They're um, having an awesome experience and they are staying in school. If it's around 50%, I would follow up with why. Why are half your kids leaving? And so that should send up a red flag. Do you have study abroad options? Do you have internships and co-ops? Are there special offices where our kids can find out all of the information they need. Do you offer a federal work study? If so, where can I get those jobs on campus? What's your middle 50% ACT and SAT scores? Do you super score, okay? Who teaches most, if not all, of your undergraduate classes? Is it a professor? or is it a TA? I would hope for the money that we're paying that the, the professor is gonna teach those classes. Do you have a scholarship deadline? 
Do you have a scholarship list? If so, where can I find those? And do you have any deadlines? Can I find those as well? Are you test optional? If so, what was your admit rate for the test optional kids from last year? Do you super score ACT, SAT? If your kids are active in dual enrollment, you wanna ask them, do you accept dual enrollment credit? If so, do you accept it as credit or do you also accept the GPA? Social media, parents, I wanna help you with this. Students, colleges, over half of the colleges out there will use, will use social media as part of the holistic review. So be careful what you post. And what needs to be done before August 1st? Your students need to have a list of colleges they want to apply to. They, need, they should have visited all of those schools already. They need to know the deadlines and the timeline. They need to make a decision. Am I applying with my scores to the, these schools, but I'm not going to apply with scores to these schools? And they need to create a plan of when during the week they plan on working these applications. If, if they have a deadline of the 1st of November, they wanna to look to be done by the 15th of October. They wanna be finished early. Now, this question, I questioned even putting this out there, but is the admissions process fair? I guess the only thing I can say, it all depends who you talk to. If you talk to the parents of the students that the kids got into Ohio State, they think it is. If you talk to the parents of the kids who didn't, they probably don't. But what is important that as we are looking at our kids getting into said school, the, those colleges are trying to put together a class. And every year I get surprised at who gets in and who does not get in. You also want to ask too, if you hear colleges say they admit students financial aid blind, if you don't hear them say that, then that means you might want to ask, does financial aid have an impact on getting in to your school? The answer is probably yes. Special talents help if they're in the band and in the choir, are they an athlete? Those special talents do help. Is that fair? Is that unfair? Every student is different. Where are students from? As I said, like Ohio State, they're going to admit kids from all 80 counties in all 50 states. Is that fair? That's up to everybody to make their own choice on that, but that is the reality. And so I just wanted to put that out there so, so you understand that. And at any time you want to reach out to me, please feel free to send me an email or follow, follow me on Twitter. I try to put things out every day on that. And so I try to put things out about ACT, SAT, upcoming meetings and things like that. So feel free to email me. I would love to schedule a time to meet. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.